Financial Modeling, Topic 12, Bond Interest and Yield Curves, Section 2. We're going to construct a yield curves using empirical curve fitting. So let's talk about term structure, also called the term structure of interest rate. All it simply shows is a graphical uh, representation of the yield to maturity of different maturities of bonds with the same risk. So if we look at treasury bonds and look at the yield on the two-year treasury, the three, the five, the seven, the 10, and the 30, and draw a line through that. We say that's the yield curve or the term structure of interest rates. What if we want to look at many, many triple B rated bonds? So these are non-callable triple B rated bonds with maturities of six months to 10 years. And we want to use this to construct a yield curve, a theory, uh, an empirical yield curve that best fits this data and with maybe the purpose to try to determine which one of these bonds are undervalued or overvalued. What we can do is we can download this information, fit a yield curve based on the data, and then look at individual bonds and see whether uh, they're, what their price would be if they're priced according to this empirical yield curve. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the spreadsheet and notice we have a bunch of bonds issued here or listed here I'll go to the bottoms and it looks like we have uh, down to row 426 is that JC JC Penny bond if I go to the top I got the Panhandle Eastern Pipeline Company bonds again all triple B non-callable corporates and here are the prices these are the coupon rates annual coupon rates these are the maturity dates, and the data I got here was from Beninga's textbook and had a settlement date of 8-11-2006 for purchase. And this bond, I converted these dates to years, um, and so the uh, maturity in these bonds are 0.59 years out to 10 years. And the yield of maturities are listed here. So what if you want to grab all this data and plot it using Excel's uh, XY scatter graph? I'm going to select these two columns, control shift down, and then I'm going to go back up to the top. And then I'm going to insert an XY scatter graph. There's my data. So each one of these points represents one of these bonds. I'm then going to take my graph. Let me expand it a little bit. I'm going to click on the data, do a right click. And I'm going to add a trend line. Now what this does, it first fits a best fit line, kind of regression line, but I want to have a line with curves. So I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for a polynomial. I want to get a third order polynomial. What a third order polynomial is going to do, it's going to give me a chance to have a, 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 a best fit curve in which the curve is changing three times. And what I'm going to do is then I'm going to ask it to display the chart, or equation on the chart, and the R squared. And I'm going to lift that up. And what that says is the Y variable, the, the yield to return of this curve is the intercept of 2.21% plus 0 0.0152 times the maturity plus or minus 0 0.0023 times maturity squared plus 0 0.0001 times maturity cubed. So that's the equation of this third order polynomial. And that's the best fit line for third order polynomial. Let's interpret what that line actually means. If I, if I want to use that line to actually value some bonds. So again, each one of these data points is an individual bond. If I look at this bond right here, this bond has a very high yield compared to the other bonds. If I were to plug in this equation for this bond based on its maturity, again, these all are triple B, so they, they in theory have the same uh, risk, I would get a much lower price I'm sorry, a much higher price if I were to put in this lower yield. So what this tells me 
is this bond is giving me an excellent yield or a low price. So these bonds, all the bonds above this curve are undervalued using this model, meaning that their yields are too high compared to their uh, comparable bonds of the similar risk. And all of these bonds, let's look at this bond right here. This bond has a very low yield for these other triple Bs of this maturity. So therefore, I'd say this must be an overvalued bond. It's giving me a low yield. In other words, its price is too high. So one way of thinking about uh, security selection for these bonds is maybe get a best fit curve. And then uh, let's just assume, uh, if, if we assume that this is the best fit curve, these are all the undervalued bonds on top and these are all the overvalued bonds below. Although I will give you a warning here, you can look at this line, it does terrible job, this third order polynomial does a terrible job of fitting the very short end of the curve. It just can't handle that short end. So I probably don't assume that all of these are overvalued. I'm probably just not gonna uh, uh, make that judgment based on the short end of the curve and how this curve is fitting. So let's do another thing. Uh, this little regression tool is great. Uh, it does give me a best fit line. Uh, what it is not very good at is when you display the equation, you don't get enough decimal places uh, to make an accurate uh, uh, estimate of yield. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, re and not just, I'm, gonna, I'm actually just gonna rerun this, but not using Excel's graph function to give me that equation or line. I'm gonna use a, a multivariable regression. So I'm gonna go back to my data let me just move this graph over here. And I'm gonna put in T. Well, let me just copy this format. I'll put in T. And then I'm gonna put in variables T squared and T cubed. Now again, I'm doing a third order polynomial. Now t is just going to be this maturity, t squared is going to be that maturity squared, and t cubed is going to be that original t cubed. Let me shrink these down a little bit. So now I have t, t squared, and t cubed. I'm going to copy that down. And now I'm going to run a regression, data, data analysis, regression. I'm going to regress. My y variable is going to be my yield to maturity and that is this entire column here including the label. I'll click on label. My x variable are going to be these three contiguous columns including the t, t squared, and t cubed labels down to the bottom. I'm going to click on output range. I'm going to put it right here. and hit OK. So here's the equation of my line. My intercept is 0.022112. If I look at this graph over here, it see it's a little bit more precise. All right, this was using 0.0221. My intercept, or my coefficient for t, in this case was 0.0152, it's actually 0.015248. My intercept on our coefficient for t squared I was using 0 0.0023 here, it's 0 0.002315, negative, and so on. So these are the more precise values. I'm going to make these inputs now, since they're not being calculated. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to calculate a model yield. And what that is, it's going to tell me what would the yield be of every one of these bonds if based on its maturity, it were on this line. So in other words, if I'm looking at this bond right here, the, this is the actual yield of maturity. Looks like 6.95%. Uh, uh, I wanna know what this yield would be. In other words, if it were on this line, what would its yield be? And how I do that is I would just take my intercept, anchor it, plus my T, times the coefficient for t squared, anchor that coefficient, plus my t cubed, times my coefficient, 
anchor it plus my t cubed times my coefficient anchor it make sure I've anchored the intercept one coefficient two coefficient three hit enter I'll make that a percentage copy that down so these would be the yields of these bonds if they're priced on this curve in other words their yields were on this curve and then I can calculate the model price in other words what would the price of all these bonds be if their yield were this model yield when I'll do it I'll use my Excel's price function I'll launch this I need a settlement date we'll assume 8 11 2000 6 anchor that maturity dates we can put in these dates here the annual coupon rate I'm going to use the model yield redemption of 100 frequency twice a year basis I know these are corporates so that's going to be zero and I'll hit OK so there's my price of all my bonds based on being priced off of this yield curve now one way of using this again I said I don't really trust the front end of the curve but let's look at the very end of the curve these last four bonds I'm going to go down here these last four bonds let's look at that last bond that last bond had a price model price of 107 based on having a model yield of 660 the actual price of that bond was 113 so I'd say that last bond must be overvalued based on that so I'm not gonna I'm sorry it's gonna be um, yeah overvalued the price of the bond is 113 I think it's worth 107 this bond here was priced at 102 I think it's worth 99 so I'm not gonna buy this one this bond here it's selling for 102 I think it's worth 105 so maybe I'll buy this Royal Caribbean Cruise Line bond. So this is a way of calculating an empirical yield curve and doing security selection on bonds. Some warnings. I said before these models don't work very well in the short end, so I wouldn't uh, look uh, too much into the short, temp, short end of the yield curve for making security selections. A couple of the bonds in this data set had some negative yields. I would probably omit these observations if I were to done, do this again. And also that YTMs we're calculating is not the same thing as the expected returns. So it's just a, a warning that maybe the reason why some of these bonds maybe appear to be undervalued is maybe because there's an anticipated uh, uh, bond rating change or maybe the recovery on some of these bonds are significantly different than the recovery of other bonds. So just a, just a warning that uh, there's a lot of things that could be going on before making these security selections. So in this topic, we talked about calculating a regression or empirical yield curve. The pros of this approach of calculating a yield curve is we can get high R squareds. We have lots of data in the yield curve, uh, and, and it gives us high R squareds. Um, however, what this thing, what this doesn't do, it doesn't tell me why the curve is, sh is shaped the way it is. Why shouldn't that yield curve be downward sloping? I'm just looking at data observations. So what we're going to talk about in the next topic is theoretical models of yield curve. You know, different shapes that that yield curve should look, not just basically how it looks based on current bond prices and yields. So this topic, we constructed yield curves using empirical curve fitting. The next topic, we'll construct yield curves using a theoretical model.